In this lesson, I'll finish the wheel part by adding several cutouts along the larger of the two circular faces. While I could painstakingly sketch and cut each one, I'll instead utilize something called a pattern. A pattern feature takes a piece of geometry and repeats instances of it across a specified edge or face, saving you a lot of time. It's also possible to apply patterns to sketch geometry and between assemblies, but I'll focus on part level patterns in this lesson. Before I create the pattern, however, I'll need to create a sketch for the cutout. I'll choose to begin a new sketch on the larger of the two faces. X-Design rotates the view so that I'm looking straight onto the sketch plane. This will be a simple circular sketch, so I'll launch the circle tool from the shortcut toolbar by pressing the S key. I'll mouse over the origin, then follow the inference line up to the larger of the two faces. I'll click once for the center, and again for the radius. At this point, I'll press escape on the keyboard to get back to the selection arrow. For the design intent of this cutout, I want to ensure that the center of the circle is always positioned vertically above the origin. To add the geometric relation, I'll select the center point of the circle, and while holding the control key on the keyboard, select the origin. Now, I can select the vertical relation from the context toolbar that appears. If I click to drag the circle, you can see its radius is underdefined, and it's free to move vertically. To define its distance from the origin, I'll launch the Sketch Dimension tool from the shortcut menu. Click on the circle, and the origin, and place the dimension in the work area. I'll type 34.5 mm and press Enter on the keyboard. I'll add a diameter value of 9 mm and press Enter to accept the dimension. I'll hit Escape to exit the command. Then, I'll click the green check to exit the sketch. Now that the sketch is fully defined, I'll switch to an isometric view for better visibility. In the Features tab, I'll click the Extrude tool and adjust the property to Cut. I'll select the circle I just created and make sure this cutout always goes through the entire part even if the part changes. So, I'll set the end condition to Through One Way. Then click the green check, and the cutout feature is added to the Design Manager. To replicate this hole using a circular pattern, I'll first switch to the right view so I can look at what I'm patterning. On the action bar, I'll expand the arrow next to the linear pattern icon, and select Circular Pattern from the list. Each of the patterning tools behaves in a similar way, so once you get the hang of one, it'll be easy to use the others. At the top of the circular pattern property, XDesign asks what exactly I'm patterning. I'll click the extrude cut I made a moment ago from the design manager. Next, it asks for the axis of rotation. In this case, I'll just click the wheel's outer circular edge. When you work with a pattern, you're able to replicate features, individual faces, or entire bodies. The preview appears right away, and if I make a change, such as changing this option from Instance Angle to Pattern Angle, adding 12 instances, the preview updates as well. Similar to creating a Revolve feature, I can also choose to adjust the Angle value. The two options I just mentioned, Instance Angle and Pattern Angle, can help define the spacing you desire. If I click back to Instance Angle, set the angle to 15 degrees, and the number of instances at 10. This means that I am essentially replicating each instance within 15 degree increments from each other. If I change to pattern angle, set the angle to 360 degrees, and the number of instances to 12, all 12 instances will be patterned equally through that 360 degree range. Once the preview looks good, I'll click the green check and the circular pattern is added.